Welcome to the Midwinter Concert. I didn't know how midwinter it was going to be until right after our rehearsal. It looked like a blizzard out there, so we're very appreciative of having all of you here uh, to brave the winter. Um, that first piece is from uh, really just a collection of the most, uh, the widest variety of music that Rossini composed near the end of his life. He was, as everyone knows, a tremendously gifted operatic composer and he made a fortune at that. He was also a great impresario and so he was able to retire rather early and he spent about 26 years after retirement writing not a note and enjoying life. And then the last 10 or 15 years of his life he he began writing again, but more for his own enjoyment in the things that he wanted to do, not for commissions. And so, hence the, and then later, after his death, uh, most of those pieces were gathered up into a big collection called Sins of Old Age. Uh, and he was one of those people that was able to poke fun at himself not the least in La Passeggiata, which is really, as the old Seinfeld series says, about nothing. Uh, he made fun of opera libretti, where uh, there was such emotional angst about very little, and then the soprano saves the day by acknowledging that the moon is there, and then everything's okay. And that is uh, a, a great operatic composer able to sort of poke fun at himself. This next piece is a very, very, uh, very different. It has, uh, uh, I guess, distant relations because the subject matter is an Italian uh, of immense fame and historical reputation. Leonardo da Vinci, as again, you all probably are aware, if not the greatest, is probably considered to be one of the most complete human geniuses that the planet has ever known painter, a sculptor, an inventor, a mathematician, a philosopher, a musician, and on and on and on. And not that he just did these things, but he did them better than anyone else. And as far as the drawings of human anatomy alone, uh, early and uh, the beginning of true medicine uh, really gained a lot through his inside-out uh, depictions of the human body, from the organs through the skin, everything, the muscular, the way that the muscles worked. One of the many things that Leonardo imagined was flight and flying. And wouldn't it be something if mankind could fly? And um, Eric Whitaker, the, what I, who I think is a great composer, uh, late 20th, early 20th, 21st century, uh, composer, this is my favorite piece that I've yet conducted of his because it, it's, it says what if. And all of that text that is set by Silvestri, uh, his partner in crime in this libretto, um, goes back and forth between a narration and you will see some Italian text and there is a translation there. The Italian text is word for word taken from the manuscripts and notebooks of Leonardo. So they are his comments about his thinking about flying and building flying machines. Um, the other English text is Silvestri's imagination about what the conversation might have been in Leonardo's mind about uh, what was happening and sort of a narration of his actions. So we'd ask you to follow along uh, in this um, masterpiece, I think. The combination of Italian, the ability to uh, show the colors and the imagination of the inner mind, what somebody's thinking, and the magnificence of flight. The rest would, will be a surprise for you. We're excited to present Leonardo Dreams of His Flying Machine by Eric Whitaker.
What a wonderful thing that we have uh, in this facility. Uh, there are zero other facilities north of Portland and uh, west 
of Denver. I'm, I'm excluding the Disney Hall, I know that that's out there, uh, that have the ability to go from anywhere from one second of reverb to three and three quarters in three minutes. And we want to show off our hall a little bit. In addition to that tremendous uh, coronation anthem, four of which, we sang one of them, four of which were written for the coronation of George II and his consort Caroline, Caroline uh, the second of the Georgian kings, uh, who made Handel, who was a, originally a German-born citizen, an English one, and made him master of the king's chapel, in, all, in the, all in the same stroke. And so Handel submitted four splendid coronation anthems for Westminster Abbey and the coronation. That one should actually be marked number one. That's why it's in parentheses. Uh, in the numeric system, it got all mixed up. And this is the one where the king is presented to the, the congregants as the new ruler. We would like to go from the magnificent to the sublime and sing for you the very well-known Abend Lied uh, setting by Josef Reinberger.
See, this gives enough time for those three minutes to go by, changing the acoustic. Um, Rheinberger was a member of what was called the Tuchelian movement, and that was in the very late Romantic. Uh, church music had become rather uh, busy, and lot, some instrumental uh, sounds for some of the cathedrals were, were just almost too resonant for the spaces. And the clergy of the Austro-Germanic uh, speaking area uh, of Europe really started to limit the kind of music that was performed. And so Rheinberger was one of a lot of late Romantic composers that decided that they were going to re-invest uh, in, in uh, Catholic church music in the German-speaking countries and eliminate excess, use as their models Palestrina and uh, De Lasso and Monteverdi and some of the a cappella style that had been prevalent before. And you can hear that imitation in that music. Uh, simply sublime, but in newer, more romantic harmonies. Uh, we'd like to continue something completely different, a wonderful Hebrew so uh, folk song. And the gist of it, if you don't get the exact meaning, you'll get the spirit. And the translation is in your program. Simona Midimon. Next piece requires a little bit of explanation. Um, Let My Love Be Heard was commissioned in 2014 uh, by a professional choir in, uh, in Washington State. And in that choir was uh, the director of Cal State Long Beach, Jonathan Talberg. And at the time, uh, it was a wonderful also, the text is a prayer, and it's written in your program. Uh, wonderful setting, sublime setting, really, of this amazing text. 
the next year, Friday, November 13th, 2015, were those awful Paris bombings, those terrorist bombings. And uh, Jonathan Talberg, who had sung in the initial recording, in the premiere, had a student in the Long Beach Concert Choir who was killed in the Paris bombings. And it was right, literally two weeks before their concert. And you can imagine, uh, I mean, the, if you recall how um, you know, terrible that news was and how many people, um, 130 people were killed and 413 were wounded. And Jonathan Talberg's choir was the first choir that wasn't a professional choir to record this piece and to perform it. And they performed it first at this concert in dedication of the student that was lost. And uh, that background story and uh, Jake Runstead's beautiful music and Alfred Noyes' beautiful poetry have allowed us to both rehearse the work and discuss its uh, multiple possible meanings for each of us. We would like to present for you Let My Love Be Heard by Jake Runstad.
Once again, thank you so much for coming out and joining us on this midwinter evening. Uh, we'd like to end with a gospel piece by Byron Smith, who is a real gospel uh, performer, singer, jazz pianist, and uh, you can tell by these arrangements, they're just really great. Uh, we have the soloists that are featured, their names are in your program. I do want to make one announcement that the wonderful soprano diva who sang in the La Passeggiata uh, was Autumn Harris. Her name did not make it into the program, but she needs credit for that. So just, uh, Autumn, where are you? Raise your there she is, yay! So, all of the folks behind me I'd like to thank. This is a real early concert for us, like about two, two weeks early. But uh, they, I've, just, I've got great groups this year, just great spirit uh, groups. And I hope you can see that and hear that in their sound. I'm very, very proud of them. And we'd like to put some of that spirit, leave it with you on the stage. Thank you again for joining us. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll end with He'll Make a Way, featuring Natalia Lauk and all these other musicians behind me. Thank you. How sweet the sound that saved a soul like me, yeah. His mercy is everlasting, his truth endures, and he sent his son to set me free, yeah. the time my heart to fear and grace the fear